Since he premiered last season on The Mandalorian, I have been waiting for a Moff Gideon Black Series figure. But was it worth the wait? Is he worth the $20? Or should we just wait a little bit longer until MathX or SH Figure Arts inevitably releases one? Let's find out and dive deep into this Black Series figure. What is up guys? Welcome back to Nerdzoic. So today I have the Moff Gideon Black Series figure. Before we get into it, I want to let you know that you can pick this guy up right now for pre-order at Big Bad Toy Store. Link in the description. Also in the description is a link to my 10 Commandments of Toy Collecting. A list of rules that I've developed over a long history of collecting toys that I think will really help you whether you're a new or veteran collector. If this is your first time seeing a review on the channel, I do what I like to call a deep dive review. I go in, I take a look at the accessories, the packaging, I show it off with the articulation and how the aesthetics look, do a little size comparison. Then I give you my final thoughts anywhere between zero and five stars. And I'll also let you know who I think this figure is best for. That way you can make a decision as to whether you need to spend your hard earned money on it. This figure was revealed in early November and I have been so pumped ever since seeing it. Plus, Darksaber. Not only is it a great actor, great character, but we're getting a Darksaber for the first time in any toy line at least that I know of. All right, here we go. So from the front, dead on, straight view, we have his Darksaber, his Blaster, Moff Gideon himself. We got the Black Series logo up top, the uh, series he's from. So he's from the Mandalorian, obviously. And then all the standard legal stuff down here, along with the Hasbro label and his name. On this side here, nothing. We just got the Black Series label, nothing special. You can see into the side of the window. From the back here, we have his bio in five different languages. Imperior Moth, Gideon is fiercely determined to capture a specific quarry. Clever and formidable, Gideon values power and knowledge. He sounds a little bit like the space version of Liam Neeson. We have his art here, which is a, I guess, black and white stencil art thing there. I don't know, I'm not an artist. Another Black Series logo, and then on the side, we have that same picture, but it's got the orange stylized for the mural for those of you who enjoy this packaging line like I do. Uh, show them what he looks like. Let's see here. Build up this Mandalorian setup. There you go. That's what the ones I have in front of me all look like when put together. So what's nice is for the loose collectors, you're able to set up these boxes and still get some display value out of them after opening it. And then as far as behind him up here, we do have his TIE Fighter, by the way. I did forget to mention that. All right, let's get this puppy open. Gideon comes with three accessories total. First, we have his blaster, which fits really nicely into a fake leather holster, which I'll show you when we show the figure off here in a minute. A beautiful cape, which is disappointingly only one color, red on the front or in the back, black on the front. But the reason I say disappointingly is usually I complain about no shading, but the way this is sculpted and the recesses make it look like there's some nice shading and highlights on there, even though there's not, so it doesn't matter. Bottom line is it's a beautiful piece, and it pops right into his back, which I'll show you here in a moment. We also get the blaster, a pretty standard blaster here as far as Star Wars Black Series figures are concerned. And last but not least, we get what everyone is waiting for, the Darksaber. There she is. Couple complaints on the Darksaber. One, the bottom of it is not glossy at all. So in the show, it has a glossy finish. It looks like it does a little bit here right now, but that's just the lighting. It really is a flat black. Also, there's no silver on the top of the hilt, which there is on the show. I'll throw a picture up so you can see what I mean. So it just being painted black is a little disappointing. The blade itself has this weird translucent plastic around the black blade to make it look like it's glowing. And honestly, it looks really good. They did a really nice job on that. So hats off to you, Hasbro. Now, the Darksaber will fit into either hand just totally fine. So got it in his one hand there. Fits in the other hand just the same. You can get the Darksaber into both hands as well, even though he doesn't really hold that position at all during the show. You can get him into it just fine. The blaster check this out. Check out that holster. I'm really impressed with that. I know little things, but that's what it takes to make a toy great for me. And it fits right in there, obviously. His cape goes on like so. There's a little peg that goes into the back like a so. Boom. And it just sits in there. It's not on there very well. If you start moving them around, that's going to fall off. Boom. See what I mean? It will fall off on you. But overall, accessories not bad. I really wish though that we got a second Darksaber hilt so that we could have one where it's not ignited. I also would have been happy to have a second set of hands because as it is, all we got are the hands where it looks like he's holding something like a pipe or a lightsaber or a weapon. 
I don't know anybody who walks around with their hands like this, so it's hard to have them in a generic neutral pose. So overall, the Darksaber's good. Love the holster that comes with him, that comes on him. The cape's pretty good. Only disappointment is the lack of a Darksaber hilt and the lack of an additional set of hands, but beggars can't be choosers. So let's come in close and take a look at his aesthetics. So first of all, check out that face. I'm just blown away by the, by the face sculpt and paint job on him. It looks amazing. The wrinkles that they added in, the bags under his eyes, the, just the detail blows my mind. His little mustache that is just like kind of pencil thin, it is as good of a face sculpt as I have seen on a Black Series figure. Even dumb little details, like look, I don't know, let's see if I can get it here. He has an Adam's apple. Like that's just one of those things that you don't usually see as something that's done to the Black Series figures. They don't usually take that level of detail in such small things, but they did with this. Now I think some people might say that his eyes are slightly too narrow, but I don't think they are. I think they're dead on. Let me know what you think, but I think they're pretty perfect. The only complaint I have about his head, and it's a minor gripe, is his hair. It reminds me of the first Yoda release where the back of his head looked like a bed of soba noodles because I just used one paint. When they redid Yoda, he had a nice wash. That's what this needs. It needs something else. Then again, his hair was very uh, thin, so I don't know how you do it. But I'm thinking that if they would have done this in black and then washed it, with that dark gray that it has, it would have looked a lot better. As far as his upper body goes, his chest plate is a separate piece, but it does not come off. It looks like it's glued on in spots. I'm sure someone with some talent other than me could get that off. I cannot. The shoulder pads, the pauldrons here is what I think their official term is. They do not come off either, and they are a separate piece. They're sculpted, well, they're not sculpted. They're glued onto the shoulders to try to help with the articulation and not limit it too much. I love his detailed gloves. They look just like they did in some of the photos of Moff Gideon from being on set. Look at that, perfect. I also really like the fact that his skirt piece, whatever this is, is so pliable. They put the slits on the side, but you can get him into a sitting pose without any issues because of the way it's on there. I'll show the articulation better in a moment, but the elbow articulation is blended in really, really well. Part of that's easy because of the color, but overall, just the design, the way they did the wrinkles on the arms helps blend it and takes away that action figure look. Lower body, same kind of idea. So negative, I'd say that the pants are a little too baggy. I doubt that standard Imperial issue has pants like this, but it doesn't really detract from the figure. In fact, if anything, it adds to it because it makes it look uh, different. It has some detail, some depth to it. What's interesting is the knees. When I was looking at this in the package, I was like, oh my God, are they literally giving us a figure without any articulation in the knees? Because you can't see it, but it's there. The knees are articulated and it's pretty well hidden. And I gotta say, Bravo, Hasbro. That's some nice looking sculpting right there. I like saying it like I'm a sculptor. The only art I know how to do is uh, edit. That's about it. And that's not even that good. Overall, he's a pretty easy figure to paint. They did put a nice texture on the uh, actual fabric here. So it looks like a texture and it, you know, they didn't have to do anything other than paint it black. Uh, the gloss here, very nice. Like I said, they have the red highlights on his belt, down his arm and down his legs. Looking really good. So it's a very good paint job overall. As far as likeness goes, Good Lord, did they nail it. Check him out here versus a side-by-side. -side. Not only is his outfit perfect, but his face is just, it's dead on, man. They really did an awesome job with this. They made us wait a while, but I feel like so far it's worth it. His neck is on what appears to be a double barbell. It's really hard to tell because I can't get it off, and I'm afraid to push any harder than I have. He does not have a lot of neck articulation. If you go like this, that is, I mean, it's very natural, aside from the fact that he can do the 360. But... Side to side, you're looking at that far to the one side, that far to the other, forward. That's that's it. That's kind of disappointing. Backwards. That that's it. Now you can combine it using his uh, diaphragm joint. I'll show you in a second. But overall, the neck articulation is kind of weak. His shoulders are a standard shoulder. Uh, fully articulated, They these pauldrons take away from the range of motion for sure. Not as bad as you'd think though. Uh, so if you go in here and take a look, we can come up, he can get up about this high on the arms, that's it. Any higher than that, you start to crush that pauldron. Yeah, crush. You can go like this and pull it up the other way and do arms in the air like we don't care, but then his shoulder pauldron's on the bottom, so it looks a little goofy. Forward, no problem there whatsoever. Elbows, we just have some very basic single jointed elbows, so 
We don't go any further than a, pretty much a straight hand there. It looks like he might have hyperextended that elbow. And the bad thing here is now we can't get him into that evil dictator pose where they kind of put their arm up by their chin. Like, that's as close as we can get. Uh, I guess force perspective, it looks like it's dead on, but if you look at it from the side, nope. Rounding out the upper body articulation, his wrists are on a swivel hinge. Now the hinge is there. It took me a while to figure it out, but does not have a great range of motion. It's also very different. It does not go down and up like it usually does. It goes side to side. Diaphragm, like I said, no ab crunch. We have this diaphragm. Forward he'll lean for you that much. Backwards that much. It looks like he's doing the limbo. Taking a look at the hips, his foot will go forward that far, so pretty good range of motion there, even with the little skirt piece. Backwards, he can do a, like a side back kick there. He'll do a side kick on this side where there isn't a holster to about eh, there. That is about the best we can do. He does do about this far of a split, but I mean, let's face it, when Carlos Stanton's not doing splits. So I was really curious about the knees. I don't open many Black Series. I open a lot of Marvel Legends, and they either have a basic single joint or a basic double joint for the most part. This was weird. It had a single jointed knee, but it also had a swivel. Take a look. There you go. Single joint. Okay, pretty normal there. But then it's on a swivel, like it's a shoulder or something. It's not the same range of motion that we're going to get with a double jointed knee, but it does allow for him to get into a range of positions because he doesn't have a cut here on his calf. As far as the knee goes, it goes back that far. Let's get him in that position here for you. That's how far back his knees go. He does have a thigh swivel, by the way. I did forget to mention that. And then his ankles are on a rocker, and they go forward about that far. And they go backward one that far too, about two clicks. This is a smaller figure, so smaller figure means smaller feet. So he is a little bit difficult to stand. You can do it. And honestly, I'm a little bit of an idiot when it comes to standing figures. If you watch more of my videos, you'll see that. Almost had him. I think for a normal person, he's probably average difficulty to stand. But for me, he's definitely a struggle. Articulation is easiestly the weakest point of this figure, but it really doesn't detract all that much because the character doesn't move around in any crazy motions. Sure, we have some cool fight scenes with Gwen Carlos Stanton, but he's not doing anything super crazy, and the figure should be able to do everything you need, with the only exception being looking down a little bit more and looking up, because it is a short figure, which we'll look at right now as we do a little bit of a size comparison. Moff Gideon stands in at just about five and five eighths inches, which is pretty incredible because Gwen Carlos Stanton is five foot eight inches. So to do the whole one twelfth scare conversion, that means this figure is technically like less than a sixteenth of an inch off. He looks super tiny standing next to Captain Phasma, but he's really not. He, I mean, if you look at him next to that trooper and that Poe Dameron figure, you see he's pretty darn accurate. He fits in and he scales really well because, he, again, he's a shorter guy. The whole point of the character is that his character is what towers over you and intimidates you, not his actual physical presence, which is probably why he has this obsession with the Force. It's like a Napoleon complex with metachlorians. Metachlorian complex. So who needs this figure besides for the obvious Black Series completionists? First of all, obviously, if you're a Mandalorian collector and you're collecting everything from the Mandalorian, you're going to need him. If you're a one-of-every character collector, I think you're safe to pick him up because unless he is in further episodes a lot more, I don't know if we're going to get any more of these besides for just re-releases or if this is going to be the only version of the character we get because so far, this is the only way we've seen him dressed. If you're a men on card collector trying to put the murals together with the boxes, you're obviously going to need them for that if you're going to complete the Mandalorian mural. Or if you just like Empire figures or need someone to control your Stormtrooper figures. Last but not least, figure photographers, if you're doing anything from the Mandalorian, like that epic fight scene from the last episode where he fights Mando, or the surrender on the bridge with Bo-Katan, which is coming out next month, you're going to need him to do that photography. Overall, there's nothing I hate about this figure. I really wish we would have gotten that extra lightsaber hilt as well as some extra hands, but it doesn't really matter that much. The things I love about it really make up for it. I love the overall likeness and the aesthetics of the thing, and I absolutely love that pleather blaster holster. Like, I don't know why. That really just tickles me. Fancy. I love it. Where does Moff Gideon end up on the Nerdzoa grading scale? He's a solid four and a quarter star figure, which is not easy. As far as men on card goes, you no longer have to worry about the fact that he's missing accessories or has bad articulation. So I'd actually move him up to a 4.75 star figure if you're a men on card collector, which makes him a must have. So to answer the question, did it live up to the hype? 
Hell yes, it lived up to the hype. It took a while, we finally got him, but he is awesome. Now I want to hear from you guys in the comments. On the five star rating, what do you give Moff Gideon? Let me know below. Till next time, be cool, stay nerdy.